Because you said with three, three, uh, three scores and ten was our day, and by reasonable strength, by four scores. Mm -hmm. But he has surpassed that, O oh God. Mm -hmm. And he surpassed it by doing your will. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray now that that would just come in our midst. Lord, Lord and let us touch and feel each other's care. Mm -hmm. Let us be able to help and give one another words of encouragement mm -hmm. to live according to your divine will. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray now that thou would just bless us and keep us in the hollow of your hand. Yes. And lead and let your Holy Spirit lead, guide, and direct us in the way that you would have us to go. Because I know that the earth is yours, the fullness that are belong to you. And you told us in your word that man born of a woman have but a few days and are full of trouble. But yet still, Lord, you know that you're right by our side. And whatever our needs are, you're able to supply. Because when you stepped out on resurrected ground, you declared all power in heaven and earth is given unto you, and there's nothing too hard for you. And Lord, we ask you to bless us tonight, O oh God. Asking you, dear God, to bless the honoree. Continue to hold him in the hollow of your hand. Continue to strengthen him, O oh God. Because I know he is able, and I know he is willing to do your will. Yes. 
And Lord, now we ask you, dear God, just to continue to bless these United States. Lord, we ask you to bless all the, of the elected officials. Lord, let them realize that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof belong to you. Amen. And let them realize, oh God, that you are still in control. Amen. And Lord, I ask you now to forgive us for the thing that we've done, said, and even thought was not pleasing unto you. For realizing that we all have sin and come short of the glory. But you said in your word, if we just repent of our sin, that you would just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, we ask you now to cleanse us, oh God, that we can love one another as you have commanded us to live. And you said to your disciples on your way out, oh God, you said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And by this others will know that ye are my disciples. And Lord, we ask you to bless us tonight. Bless this gathering. Let it be what you would have it to be. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 God bless. And we're so thankful that you were able to come to um, help us celebrate and honor Mr. Marshall's 90th birthday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to let him know that we love him and we appreciate what he has done for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When we were under his care in elementary school, high school, or whatever. And we're going to let you know that we really, really. Thank you, mm -hmm. and we're blessed, very blessed to have you here uh, tonight with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Mr. Marshall, I was in um, high school when Mr. Marshall was our principal there. Mm -hmm. And then he's the one that convinced me to go to Albany State College, the right. University of Alabama, to continue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when um, our alumni association says that we recommend Mr. Marshall for the uh, Albany State University Hall of Fame. Yeah. I was on that committee and I'm so proud and happy yeah. to, uh, you know, carry that out with our association. Yeah. So, thank you for coming and can we let us go on and continue with the celebration. We will have a song next by Miss Kelsey Davis West. After that, we'll have reflections, and we would like for you to reflect uh, two minutes. <coughs> okay. Um, okay, this is uh, our.
doing the pocket and give you know, a big amount of money. Mm -hmm. They just take this with you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to pay it back. Mm -hmm. That's the type of man he was. He needs a man for anything he needs. Mm -hmm. He's there. Mm -hmm. Me and his mother is like this. Mm -hmm. I know she's gone, but I watch out for him. Yeah, yeah. That's Amen. The mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'll be watching you see. Is he all right? God bless. Yeah. Money or anything. Wouldn't know about the money that bothered him. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I don't know if you know, but I tell you to come back and go if you don't owe me anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just had him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good yeah. yeah. Good man. Oh, yeah. Good. He still is. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just not a Brother, yeah. father, mm -hmm. whatever you need in father, that's what he is. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank God. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Been a very neat man. Yeah. 
Adams. I'm wearing Stacey Adams and flourishing today because I'm Mr. Martin. <laughs> but God took me from the west side of town and sent me over on the south side. And I asked the Lord, why would you send me over here and work for a man named was J.D. Steve? <laughs> For years, I thought it was a punishment. <laughs> but I realized that I never did that in that day. <laughs> because of Mr. Marshall, I used to be do the janitor work out there at the school, and he demanded, he, he demanded uh, professionalism. Mm -hmm. And I consider myself today that professionalism person because of knowing Mr. Marshall. Mm -hmm. Mr. Marshall would leave the school in the afternoon when I would uh, clean my room, and I knew the kind of man he was, and I would get out there and get in detail those yards in front of that school and make Mr. Marshall look good. <laughs> and he would come in the next day and he would say, Jim, he would pay me out. Mm -hmm. I was getting a salary because I worked there, mm -hmm. but he paid me out of his pocket mm -hmm. because of the extra thing that I did. Right. And it was just the Lord had me to do that for yeah. him. Mm -hmm. I've always respected Mr. Marshall. You always come down and check with Mr. J.D. Stephen. My, I'm up on my car working hard and doing something hard. Mm -hmm. But it took a man like Mr. Marsh mm -hmm. to place me where I am today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm a successful young man because the Lord placed me in the heart of Mr. Marsh and all our educators. Mm -hmm. And I can't thank you enough for doing that. Mm -hmm. My kids, they're your grandchildren because yeah. I'm your son. Ms. Morrison didn't share this with you, but she's also being inducted into the Albany State Hall of Fame. So look what you produced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> hey, Mr. Marshall, uh, excuse my seat here, but I... I'm gonna come from a different angle also. Um, um, I remember that the, the the respect that he commanded. Mm -hmm. When I first got to eighth grade, a couple of days in, some of the boys they wanted to start him a little game, TNT game. <laughs> <laughs> Eight o'clock bell rang, we went in. By the time we sat down in our desk, Mr. Marshall was on the intercom. Yeah. I want to see every. Man, boy, out there in between the elementary school and the junior high, right now, and you better beat me out there. <laughs> you should have seen cats coming through the hallway. <laughs> By the time he got there, every boy in that school was out there, and and he gave us a tongue lashing about respect about he ain't having that in his school, you know, and, and, and that set us on the right track. Yeah, right. Yeah. And and I only had to get a paddling one time from him. Yeah. Uh, um, I think I had made it to ninth grade, and I forgot what I did, but he called me up to the office. <laughs> and so I go up there, you know, he talked to me a little bit, and then he told me, he said, stand up. Yes, yeah, sir. Turn around and reach that clock. <laughs> And he had that power with the whole man and then a sucked the meat in there. <laughs> but it, it was it was just something that that, that respect that he commanded. And I, I was I'm gonna give one last little little story um, before I, I, I say my last little bit. We used to go and um, had nothing to do on on, on uh, Sunday afternoon. We'd go around the Luster House and talk him into opening the gym for us. <laughs> And we were in there one Sunday just playing up a storm. He even had the scoreboard going. <laughs> and and they, they tell me this is what I did. Mr. Marshall stepped in the gym and said, everybody freeze. <laughs> and I was, I was doing a jump shot. That's how I stopped in the mid -air. <laughs> But he explained to us it wasn't because he didn't want us in there, but it, it was because he was op we were opening up the school to liability. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and whatever the 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 punishment that we got or the talking that we got, he always always explained why. Yeah. And and I appreciate Mr. Marshall um, um, because my dad worked a lot out of town. Um, he stepped in as well. It, it, it was just the men of the community that always gave you encouragement, always guided you in the right. 
right direction. And and, and I really appreciate it, Mr. Marshall. I, I really am thankful for yeah. it. Yeah. 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 My name is George Boston Rhymes, and I have a YouTube and Facebook video channel with 2 million views around the world and nearly 5,000 subscribers. I'm retired from the military 20 some years, had my own business for 14 years, and uh, been in the foreign countries, Okinawa, Japan, Germany, and I can't go, I won't call the rest of them. But wherever I went, it was because of the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Equipment in Brooks yeah. County, Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. And little did I know mm -hmm. back in the day yeah. mm -hmm. that those black educators yeah. mm -hmm. in that all black school yeah. Yeah. who got handed down books from yeah. the white school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when we went in the military, yeah. Miss Butts, yeah. we had to compete with the best of the best. Yeah, that's right. And we passed the test. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all because mm -hmm. of the educators. Yeah. Who wouldn't just leave us mm -hmm. along the roadside? Well, well. If our pants were down, uh -huh. they wouldn't put up with that. Yes, no, no, no. If our minds were down, yeah. they pulled us up. Yeah, yeah. But it was through the leadership, leadership. of Robert C. Marsh. Mm -hmm. Well, let me put it like this. Whatever year it opened, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm with the class of 1970. And we were the class that closed the doors, took the key, and we remember it. We also will be the class that erect the monument at that site. So Mr. Marshall will be remembered in the archival record of the state of Georgia, the United States of America, and the world. We got to get that marker up. Mr. Marshall, I say a well done. And to all the educators, but you all did a great job. Because you, you educated us to compete with the best of us. We produce doctors and lawyers and criminals and generals and a little old country boy like me. I'm not where you are, but I'm knocking on your door. Happy birthday. Does everybody tell? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when the butts get together at funerals, you know, they like this kind of feel good. How long it make that you do it in the first? Two minutes sometimes. One hand girl definitely pulled my skirt in. The little piece of it. It was nice to wait for the skirt. I said, I'm on the way. The very water. I am the way.
we talk about Mr. Mark and the great life he made out of the opportunity for him to do that. I have a little um I'm not gonna be a motto for myself too. I ain't close to be here. I've been in charge of me since I was eleven years old. Due to uh, the early death of my dad and the great of the baby, the last baby, the next month, and a series of other things that uh, hardly anybody has had to do. And I've met a lot of interesting people. I've met a lot of people that I like. I've met a lot of people that I can depend upon. Yeah. Yeah. I was at Alvin's State for about four years before he arrived there. And, uh, yeah, when, the, when the new kids come in, you know how we used to put up the And they talked about uh, this new book. And they've been sending us extraordinarily good athletes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in basketball and in football. And somehow the word got around that they sent the good ones to Fort Valley. And you count the Fort Valley and find out and, and say to yourself, everything was prophesied ain't true. <laughs> Now, um, as you're doing, <laughs> but, you know, uh, but anyway, that made me have the itch to want to see him too. Mm -hmm. My goodness, God. we had one that could play basketball like a globe truck. Mm -hmm. And then when he finished playing ball, basketball, he had to come home quick mm -hmm. and wait until the next year and then kind of work out his eligibility, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
to his feet and a lamp unto his path. Father, we ask now that as we prepare our, our mouths to receive this food, that you bless it might be nourishment for our bodies. Bless the hands that prepare it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
And Mr. Marsh, out of all those people you employed, you trust me with the master key. <laughs>
something in our republic when people apparently does not have a right to know what is taking place in their community.
Big Nanny. All right, all right, all right. Happy Happy birthday! And I'm George Boston Ryans, and I just received the breaking news that we have a new mayor in Quitman, Georgia. Much like the Quitman 10 plus 2, Nancy Dennard being the first president of the Brooks County Board of Education, and now we have James Brown the third, the first black African-American mayor of Quitman, Georgia. First of all, we acknowledge that black does not make it right, but right always make it right. We must understand that the Quitman 10 plus 2 brought Brooks County the first black majority in the history of that county. 
And as you know, the equipment 10 plus 2 was brought up on charges of alleged voter fraud, and after nearly three years, only one have had their day in court, and it ended up a mistrial. With all that has happened, with all of the complaints, with the elections in the past and identified problems at a particular meeting on July the 17th, 2012, highlighted major problems with the Brooks County Board of Elections, yet Secretary of State Brian P. Kemp were informed through formal complaint forms, given a DVD, among other detailed problems. And until this date, the people of Brooks County are still awaiting a response from Georgia Secretary of State and Glenn Austin, who was an investigator that came down from Macon at the bequest of the Secretary of State, yet nothing has been done. Moreover, the meeting was a total whiteout, and very little to nothing was done. This is the Ghetto Free Press, keeping you informed, because it is in time. It is indeed time that the people in South Georgia know the truth. To James Brown the third. Thank you to all your family that came down from New York and other places to congratulate you on your victory. As a graduate of Washington Street High School myself from Brooks County, I say to you as the Muslims say, Alhamdulillah. And to the Jews, I just say Shalom to you. And as the Christians, I say peace and blessings be upon you and to all the great worthies, worthies that helped you in your campaign. The witnesses lied on the stand. Yes, yes, yes. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation lied on the stand. Yes, that's right. Yes. Falsified documents. That's right. Yes. The Secretary of State mm -hmm. lied on the stand. Yes, sure did. yes, yes. Boone from the post office, uh -oh. who started this whole mess, uh -huh. lied on the stand. Sure did. All to try to make these citizens look guilty.
first of all, I would like to say that we commend the Pitman team plus two for the way they handle themselves. So beautiful is that it was all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a wonderful team. Sister Louis Nard, Nancy Denner, Mrs. Sims, and Atlanta, and Jimmy King. They made those people look like amateurs. Amen. Amen. Woo! Let me give you a little background. But I'm so thankful to the Pittman 10 plus 2 that they did not take a plea bargain. Amen. 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 If, they had if they had been convicted of one crime, that would have been a felony on their records. And they would have been messed up for life. My prayer to God was total exoneration. Innocent on all counts. God brought us through. Sure did. I want to give you a little background. <laughs> On December 2010, 10 citizens of Quitman, Georgia were arrested and accused of voter fraud. These citizens was arrested, unceremonially put in orange jumpsuits, their names splattered all over the newspaper. The television, the radio, and this was only an indictment. An indictment is only an accusation. But yet these citizens were presumed guilty before there was even a trial. Amen. And we must understand that every citizen is presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. When they was arrested, we thank God for the community that came together. And the first meeting was held at Bethel Army Church. We thank God for Bethel for opening their doors. I was a pastor there. We also would like to thank our good friend Floyd Rowe. Stand up. God always has people in place when you need them the most. Amen. He is a stalwart in the civil rights movement. He knew what to do. He even named the equipment team. Amen. He showed us how to get this, oh, this movement organized. And we thank God for him. He's from the SCLC, amen. We thank God for them and Tyrone Brooks coming down and helping us. Uh, also, during this movement, the NAACP was started here. And that was to, uh, there might be future cases that might come up and we'll have an organization in place to make sure we can handle this situation. Now, <coughs> The United States Constitution guarantees each person equal protection under the law. Uh, the United States Constitution guarantees that every person of our nation is presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. The rights of these citizens were violated. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. And what is so what angers me so is the fact that Sister Latasha Head died with these accusations hanging over her head. Yes, sir. And yet there are still, with her, 11 people that still have to be tried. This case has been going on for four years. Now, you have to understand one thing. And that is, every person is entitled to a speedy trial. Their rights was violated. Now, why did it take over four years to bring these people to justice? It's because they didn't have a case. Right, right, right. Amen. That's right. 
They were in their case. They were hoping that they would take the plea. But when they didn't do that, they had to prove their case. And if you were in the courtroom, if you were in the courtroom, you would have seen one of the biggest fiascos you ever wanted to see in your life. Oh, yes. That's right. Oh, yes. The witnesses lied on the stand. Yes, yes, yes. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation lied on the stand. Yes. That's right. Yes. Falsified documents. That's right. Yes. The Secretary of State mm -hmm. lied on the stand. Yes. Sure did. Yes. Yes. Boone from the post office, uh -oh. who started this whole mess, yes. uh -huh. lied on the stand, sure yes. all to try to make these citizens look mm. guilty. My That's Lord. Right. My Lord. But thank God that we have a God who sits high. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. The sad thing about this case is, Governor Deal, uh -huh. who was the leader of the state of Georgia, uh -huh. left the state capitol uh -huh. to come down here and suspend people who were elected to the school board. Yes. That's right. yes. This yes. election was certified, yes. and without due process of law, that's right. Every person is entitled to due process of law. Yeah. That's right. But he's put it upon himself to suspend Dr. Nancy Danner, mm -hmm. who has a doctor's degree. Yes, sir. Sister Diane Thomas, who has a master's degree. Earn. Earn. And yes. Sister Linda Troutman. Yes, no one. They treated us like. I, I, you got to excuse me for saying us. Because I feel I was just as angry as they were. That's right. That's right. Every citizen in Brooks County should have been angry. Upset. Come on now. Yes, sir. For yes, the way they treated our citizens. Yes, right. sir. But yet many people didn't get involved yeah. because, number uh, one, you thought they was guilty. Uh, because the white man said they were That's it. My question is, how are you going to get the horse back into the barn? That's right. These people's names have been tarnished, their reputation besmirched. They have been talked about, accused of different things. And now they are proven innocent. How are you going to get the horse back in the... How will you restore these people's good name and reputation? How are we going to do that? We need to look at, uh, at that and see what we can do to help them restore their good name. One thing that most people didn't understand, and I'm getting ready to close, were that when the GBI, the Secretary of State, canvassed the community, they tried to strike fear in the heart of the black community. Woo! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! They didn't want you to vote. That's right. They especially didn't want you to vote absentee because those absentee ballots can be accounted for. Yes, sir. Paper That's trail. Right. Paper this trail. trial proved that there was corruption downtown. Oh, yes. right. That's, That's right. right. If it right. wasn't for the absentee ballots, it never would have been uncovered. Absolutely. That's right. Many people don't understand mm. that when those incumbents were declared the winner that night, and woke up and had lost the election that next day uh -huh. it because they didn't intend to count the absentee ballot. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right.
But God prevailed. Amen. 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 The prosecution changed the wording on the ballots to prosecute Lula Smart. The language was not there in 2010. Mm. They changed it. My Lord, my Lord. That's right. On the ballot to make it look like she was guilty. The prosecution suppressed evidence. Yes, sir. They hid Amen. evidence. Show they did. Amen. I'm a witness. Amen. Show no. Speak it. Tell the truth. I believe that we ought to demand uh -huh. as concerned citizens yes. that they drop the charges Absolutely. on every remaining member. What's so amazing yeah. is that Sister Dana mm -hmm. and all of the workers on the pole had been trained. Yes. They yes. knew what to do. But yet they tried to make it look like they were incompetent. <laughs> but God prevailed. Yes. Amen. A few of the thousands of this trial and then I'm going to sit down. Amen. I don't know about you, but I got angry when I looked. I wasn't even, I didn't even vote absentee ballot that time. <laughs> and here come the GBI and the Secretary of State knocking on my door. Wow. Wow. But one thing that happened that most people don't understand is that you all shut them down. Amen. 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 You all shut them down. Amen. When you told them that we're not going to answer your question, we voted who we wanted to vote for. I did what I wanted to do. Get out of my yard. We don't have to be afraid no longer. All right. Amen. It's so much I could go on, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell the story. Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to yield, but there were so many fallacies. Yes. And I hope and pray that we all learn a lesson from this. Yes. That we're not going to let anybody come in our community no. and disrespect right. our people. Right. These, were some, these were the leading citizens of our community that they Amen. went after. Amen. 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 If the head falls, the body, you kill the head, the body gonna the die. Gonna die. But well, see, they didn't know Nancy Denner. And Diane, this sharp one. And oh, they, they, they didn't know. They didn't know. But I knew from the beginning and I knew that they were innocent from the start. I don't know about you, but I grew up in the 50s. I was born in 1952. Amen. And I know the tactics of the other man. They'll do anything to win. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But I want to say to you and to all of the people who prayed mm. and supported the Quitman team, I know some of you wanted to be there, but you mm. had to work. Mm. I know some of you could have been there, but you chose not to. But thank you for your prayers. Thank you for just putting them up before God. Amen. Amen. And, and allowing God to use them. Whether yes. you know it or not, God used them. Yes, yes, he did. There was a gentleman that called me from San Francisco, and he said, what in the world are y'all doing out there? He got on our organization, the NAACP. 
because they didn't come here. I'm angry mm -hmm. because the president of the NAACP didn't show his face. Mm -hmm. Tell it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I'm angry. Tell it. Now you're writing all kind of articles. Want them, want to quit my 10 plus 2 to come up there and talk. Where was he when they needed him the most? That's a little bit of the history. And, and I'm going to close with this. The Get Out the Vote campaign of the Quitman 10 plus those who helped were the, mo were the most brilliant campaign I have seen in my life. People voted who had never voted before in their life. Amen. People who couldn't make it to the poll. And they got beat to their own game. Come on, man. That's right. Amen. 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 It was a brilliant campaign. It was well planned, well organized. And many other communities are looking at what the equipment 10 plus 2 did. And they are doing the same thing in their communities. Of course. So we say quit from 10 plus 2. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Right now. We got a, we, we, we're fast getting a, a new council. Oh, yeah. I told one of the white generals that uh, he was wondering how did the mayor get beat. And I told him that Everybody who touched the equipment team. Yeah. Look out! Look out! Look out! There it is! There it is! There it is. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but you ain't gonna mess with no. Greetings, this is the Ghetto Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rines. You've heard about the equipment 10 plus 2. But often we forget the one that are now deceased, Latasha Head. Latasha Diane Head, I may add. And I just spent a few days in the Brooks County Courthouse with the third trial of Lula Smart. And do you not know, the state of Georgia news media networks does not consider that case to be newsworthy enough for the radio, televisions, and newspapers to report on what is happening in that case. The state of Georgia have lost, apparently, the original, let me repeat, lost the original documents of some of the information that should have been preserved by the courts. It's just a sad day. And so it reminded me, 
of the footage that I did at the funeral of Latasha Diane Head, one of the original equipment 10 plus 2. She's now deceased. And I talked to her father. She had lupus. We only know whether the stress that these charges of alleged voter fraud against these outstanding citizens and educators was just in retaliation for an election that were won by black African Americans. That's not why I'm sitting here tonight. I was very outdone by, by the state of Georgia bringing Lula Smart up again for the third time to face a court and a jury. But I'm going to reflect and flash a little bit back in memory of one of the equipment 10 plus 2 who are no longer with us. And let us do that at this time. ahead, one of the equipment 10 plus 2, and a real... This is KBC, I'm on Fox.com, this is what we call Ryan's over in Quitman, Georgia. The ghetto free press was there. The general of Natasha Head, one of the equipment 10, then the equipment 12, and now the equipment 11. We are on the south side. This is the remains coming down on the church, the steps at Bethel church in Quitman, Georgia. It is indeed a sad day for the people of Brooks County and other people around the state of Georgia. They had people far away as Atlanta and far farther to give words of bereavement to the Quitman 10 and to the family of Natasha Head. It is indeed a sad day, but we know that God knows what is best in times like these. Once again, this is Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church. And as you know, she had an ailment. So everybody who thinks there was no foul play in this, it's just an act of God. And God knows best. God knows how much we can take. And so that's the way it is. And yet, after four years, the remaining 11 still have not had any resolve to their cases here in the state of Georgia. And Lula, he, Lula Smart have had a nine, her third trial. The first one was a mistrial, second a mistrial, and the third one, only God knows. And yet, those who brought these charges up against these 11 outstanding citizens 
what they did, in our opinion, is a disgrace. It is a disgrace. It is a disgrace. Let us continue. This is Latasha Diane Head, one of the ten plus two. One who died with lupus. We don't know the stress that the state of Georgia, the district attorney, assistant district attorney, the governor of the state of Georgia, and the secretary of state, and the GBI, we don't know how much stress they put upon this young lady. We don't know how much stress is still being placed upon these black citizens after nearly four years, it is four years, and many of our civil rights organizations and women organizations and political party affiliations will not even ask, won't even Google to find out what the real deal is. Listen and we will close this out. Once again, this is This is KBC I love This is the motorcade, the final ongoing Natasha Head, one of the equipment 10, then the equipment 12, and now the equipment 11. This is in Whitman, Georgia. I'm sure it's been a long struggle for all of the Whitman 10 and their relatives and the citizens of Brooks County just not knowing what's going on and why they have to go through all of this, but I make no excuses. I personally believe that God is the best knower in a situation like this. And as a child, I was always faithed with the words from my grandmother that God would not put no more on us than we could bear. And that we are only pilgrims passing through this life of tears. And oftentimes, we who struggle in the circles of civil rights and human rights, beyond skin color, beyond ethnicity, we find ourselves with questions and trying to understand why it seems like those who struggle for others this arena of life, when too often those who just sit on the sidelines and never become actively involved, often outlive those who follow the line and lineage of Jesus, Martin Luther King, John Brown and others travel that great land of holy divine, who try to stand up on behalf of others, even in the midst of being condemned. And so I came over today simply because of the fact that I have always been touched by equipment 10 and now equipment 12 and now equipment 11 that was bold enough, courageous enough to take a stand to bring about a, be a better educational system here in Quitman in Bruce County, the state of Georgia, in America. Being a native of Quitman in Bruce County, I graduated from Washington Street High School and then 1970. We were the last class that was all black to graduate from Washington Street High School. And as you can see, we just passed the post office and John Boone, the one that started all this about the absentee ballots, and come to find out he was violating 
Postal Service laws. Listen, Luna Smart trial was the last few days. Natasha Head never had a day. God called her home. After four years, equipment 10 cases still pending. It is as if though they don't believe that these people are entitled to a speedy trial from among their peers. It's a sad day in Georgia. Yes, yes, yes. We must ask the state of Georgia, when will they stop this charade here in the land of the free and the home of the brave? A sad day, y'all. A sad day. Willie Banks and the messages. People Robin. Stealing and killing every day. Equipment 10 plus 2. Taking things that don't belong to them. And they're going on their simple way.
Well, 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 well. Equipment 10 plus 2. <laughs> shameful what has happened to the ten, to the equipment 10 plus 2 and four years they still haven't gone to trial and more and more is coming out now that it's more like a charade somebody will eventually have to give an account of what they have done to the equipment 10 plus 2 this is the ghetto free press and I'm George Boston Rhymes just keeping it real because as you know the news media don't consider our news as their news. Good evening and bye bye we go.
Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press, and I'm George Boss Ryans. And uh, what's your name once again, my beautiful brother? George, my name is Kevin Moran. All right. And you're with the People's Agenda. I'm uh, the Coalition of the People's Agenda, convened by Dr. Joyce E. Lowry. All right. I want to ask you a few questions. Number one, I've been here. I missed Monday because I was up there with the newly elected black uh, mayor, uh, Mayor Mayor Ann Whippaloo, who's been mistreated, and I believe it all inter interrelated together. Yes. But I got here Tuesday, and I didn't see any news media here Tuesday. I didn't see any Wednesday. I didn't see any Thursday, and I didn't see any today. I didn't even see any of the news reporters. I haven't seen anything in the Valdosta Daily Times, a metropolitan city. I only saw a little snippet, snippet in the Equipment Free Press yesterday when I got that in my mailbox because I subscribed to the paper. But the question is, how do you think that the news media like CNN, MSNBC, even with Al Sharpton, can e ignore or omit what is happening here in Brooks County where he ha we had hundreds of people to march here because this is a very, very high profile case. How do you, why do you think that the news media are not concerned about voting rights down here in South Georgia, apparently because they're not here? The mass media that you refer to is totally owned and operated by the white aristocracy in Georgia. And it is an inconvenient truth that equipment 10 plus 12 have been salaciously charged. 10 plus 2. 10 plus 2 with charges for crimes they did not commit, and it was proven today in court. Okay. Um, another thing I want to ask you is that if you had not spoken out a little bit about what happened here today, I say that this information that took place in the courtroom outside of the transcript, which will be a, a matter of record for, for, for all eternity, I guess, but without that, the local citizens here in Quitman and Brooks County and all around South Georgia, they wouldn't know anything about it because when the newspapers are written, which I call the archival record, when they read that in 30, 40 years in the schools, the, the schools require these students to do turn papers on the the events of yesterday, they won't be able to retrieve that from the newspaper because it wasn't there. Yes. What do you think about that? I think that's why it is essential that this word get out. I've been fortunate four years ago when you mentioned hundreds of us scattered here on the steps to be traveling with an international representative of the uh, Mennonite Church. Uh, who I contacted last night that this trial is still going on. Uh, he has learned the truth. And he is ashamed that the United States judicial system here in Quitman, Georgia, is lynching these 10 plus 2 for acts they never committed and by the media intentionally, I really believe it is intentionally not being here. Yes, sir. It is an inconvenient truth what has been done here. For four years, these women and one man have been subjected to daily harangues, allegations by the GBI put in jail because they won an election. They won an election to office that had previously been held by white males. And for the first time, we had African Americans of impeccable character and wonderful qualifications as educators elected to the school board. They've been elected two times since by the same plurality. This was not a fluke. This was not a manipulated election. This, unfortunately, for some, is the south of the future. Georgia will 
become a majority state of colored people. Our brothers and sisters in Christ will be represented. This is a democracy in the United States. We have fought for it. We are entitled to our rights of equality under the law. We haven't seen that here. And the media doesn't want to be telling that story because governors, heads of the GBI, secretaries of state will be criticizing them and exerting again power upon them. We're playing with some we're playing with some players that have great power and great audacity to use it. We need to stand up to them. We need to tell the truth. The truth needs to be told. And George, you are telling the truth. You are the only member of the press here today. And it's a privilege to have you here and documenting the truth. I thank you very much, and uh, I'm not going to because of the flavor of my nature and what I call the nature of my flavor. I am not going to allow you to stand there without by yourself. I'm going to come and shake your hand because no man in this struggle should have to stand alone. So wherever you go, I'm with you. And I declare before God and man that right does not have a skin coat. Yep. I love you, my beautiful brother. I love you. And I love the flavor of your nature. The president of SCLC, Reverend Dr. Stewart, uh, uh, will be here on Tuesday. Uh, I spoke with the president of the Georgia NAACP this afternoon. Francis Johnson yes, he is sending out a notification to all the NAACP members to be here all day. That is power. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. God All bless you, my dear. Thank you so much. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press. I'm George Foster Rhymes, and I do what I do because I served this nation for 21 years. This is my hometown. My grandmother told me the history of this place, Brooks County, and I love Brooks County, but I love justice and equality for all men, and women, and their children, regardless of whether they're Germans, Russians, Jews, or, what, or Palestinians. We are all in this struggle together trying to build a better world. And if our forebears yesterday gave their life for us to get where we are today, then some, of, some more of us may have to sacrifice and go to an invisible cross. But in the end, I will assure you that truth, right, and justice will win in the end. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Thank you.